And so they all will see that there's an event, and the event is no school. Um, so I think that's the one way you could uh, get around that. Um, I actually don't think you can, Jill. I've, I've definitely created events before on my, again, my personal page when I've done outreach stuff, but the Kulano page, I'm looking at it right now, and there is no option. The only options are to edit the page, suggest to friends, view insights, I don't know what that means, and promote with an ad. There's nothing about adding, uh, creating an event. Okay, well that's then another pro for having a profile page over over a business page. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think if people haven't created yet, they should go with a profile page, and I may switch to that because it's definitely been yeah. limiting. Yeah, I agree yeah. because I I can't I can't uh, um, tag unless they're my personal friends. I went to go look this now. I can't tag them. I can't just okay. go into my uh, yeah. So it, I, it really looks like. Having a personal page is the way to go. Okay, good. All right, so yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah, like I said, there's pros and cons to both, but it seems like this is definitely more of a pro. Um, one thing I'll say when, when you are creating events that I've actually found is that kids are really not reliable when it comes to actually RSVPing. Um, you know, like you get those kids who just say yes to everything, and then you get the kids who never respond to anything. So I, you can see here it says only a NIMS can view the guest list. This is all, um, if somebody else clicks on my event page, this is all hidden from them. They can't see it. So, um, yeah, I think the only time I'll, I'll make it reappear is if I get a bunch of kids saying that they're attending, I'll let it show because maybe that will convince other kids that they should come, you know, to this fun event. Um, but event pages are really great to get the information out and to get it out quickly. Um, another awesome... Uh, Minimize some things so I can see it. Okay, another really great function on Facebook, which is somewhat newer, is down here um, you have a chat option. And so um, right now it says that um, my our chat is offline. So all you have to do is just click that and hopefully it will come up. Okay, there we go. So now now the DJ chat is on, and so you can see everybody else that's on Facebook right now that you're friends with. And if they have the green little circle, that means that they're actually active on Facebook, versus if they have that, like, moon, it means that they're um, idle. And so this is a really awesome way to you just click on someone's name, and it's like instant messenger, but it's right on your Facebook page. And so if you need to ask a kid, like, a quick question or get some information, whatever, it's a really great informal way to talk to them, and they like talking like this. So, um, so I found that it's been really useful sometimes. Um, the last big thing is I'm going to go to our home page because, um, like I said, when I first set it up, I set up I set us up as a group, which I found not useful. However, groups really do have a great use um, on a smaller scale, and I'm going to show you an example right now. Um, one of our teachers teaches, um, he call it, it's like a senior seminar class, so it's for all of our 12th graders, and it's, the content is essentially about the beyond high school life. And he created this great group, and he invites all the current students to join the group, and then um, he invited alumni of, of you know, past kids, because he's been teaching forever, um, to join the group as well. And then each year as the kids graduate, um, you know, they, they are now the alumni on the group. And he posts really great questions. Um, I'm going to click on discussions. He has a great discussion board where he has all these um, different topics. Like back in September, he wanted to know how the, the, all the kids' first week of college was going, um, who had just graduated. And you can see kids wrote back really nice, thoughtful responses. And what he did then is he took all these great responses and he took it back to his senior seminar class, and he uses the material. And it's been so great because it's, um, it makes the alumni stay connected to, um, you know, our Jewish school and makes them feel important. And what we also found is that a bunch of the kids who are in the senior seminar class, then they kind of get excited to be able to help contribute for next year's class. Um, and we this year we had our second annual alumni night, which we started for the first time last year, and we had so many alumni coming back because they're just so pumped to keep coming back and be excited about working with these kids. So it's been really, really beneficial to use in this way. Um, now, I will say, though, because I said before, Facebook is 
changing all the time. So that group was set up um, a couple, maybe a year or two ago, and groups have changed since then. And I don't think that the new Facebook technology has, um, you know, is able to convert the old groups to their new format. But they do have a new format on your homepage. It'll say right here, it says create group. And it actually makes it a lot easier to create groups. And so um, you could create a group, um, any name that you wanted to, and um, then you can invite people, so people that you're already friends with. So if I wanted to invite Evie, her name comes up, and all the people come up. And then you can choose how you want your group to be. If it's open, that means anyone can see that the group exists, and anyone can see the material on the group page. If it's closed, you can see the group exists, but you cannot read the material. And if it's secret, only the people that are invited to the group um, can see anything. And so um, you can create your group, and to make it click cancel, there's no reason to create a new one. But once you do, it looks just like a profile page, but it's a special group that you've only invited certain people to. Now, the coolest feature about this new group... Can I ask one question? That comes off of where? Groups. Comes off of this page that we're currently looking at or something else? On the home page, it'll say create group, which is okay. right here. Got it. Thank uh, you. Yeah, and it's, uh, but once you do create it, it'll just look kind of like how your profile page looks. Um, it has the same look and feel to it. And so the coolest feature about it is that I showed you the chat box that me, the chat box that's on the bottom right here. What what the new groups have is they have a chat feature. It's about somewhere here in the middle of the page. And when you're on the group, you can click a button that says Enable Chat. And so anybody that has been invited to the group that is currently on Facebook at that time, you can have a whole group chat. So if 10 of you are online, you can all 10 group chat together, um, which is a really, really great way um, to collaborate and just, again, like really target the kids who obviously like to be on the computer all the time. Um, so that is, that is the other main feature that we use on our Facebook page. Um, we are getting close to time, so I'm just going to mention three other things quickly regarding other social networking. Um, sometimes the topic of Twitter comes up, and to be honest, what we found is that teens really aren't the big target population for Twitter. It's more older adults, so I, I wouldn't necessarily waste your time setting up a Twitter account unless a lot of your teens are into Twitter. MySpace also has lost a lot of popularity. Um, much more kids are on Facebook. But the downfall of MySpace is that it's not as protected and it's not as safe as using Facebook. There's a lot of shady things that goes on. Um, so I don't recommend using that either. And the last thing as far as, you know, for educational reasons, um, if you have a Google account, there's something called Google Docs. And you basically create a, like a Word document, a spreadsheet, um, a PowerPoint, you know, any type of office document. And you create it through Google Docs. And then you can email it to whoever you want. And the people who get it, who receive the email, like let's say it's a list and you want people's opinions about things, they get to click on the document, they get to type in, um, you know, whatever information. And because it's done through the Internet, everything's saved. So then when you then reopen the document, what other people typed in is saved on, on the document. So it's a complete collaborative effort. Um, so that's another really awesome tool to use. But that is, that's pretty much what I prepared. Um, I wanted to give you my contact information, and for some reason you wanted to, for whatever reason, that's my email. And then this is the um, link for the BJE page that I just showed you, and then this is also my personal Facebook page link if you wanted to um, get to that. And so if anybody has any questions, or if anybody wanted to share anything that maybe they've done that has really worked for them in their school, um, that would be great too.